Hello and welcome to another UConn Q-Center video. This video is about the Calculus 1 topic called optimization. Many people consider optimization to be one of the hardest, if not the hardest topic to understand in Calculus 1. So to break it down to you, what I'm going to do in this video is explain what exactly optimization is, then I'm going to show you a five-step process on how to solve optimization problems, and then I'm going to work through an example using the five-step process. In plain English, Optimization is finding the values that best meet a certain criteria. Optimization is useful in a wide array of problems. For example, maybe you're thinking about constructing a box and you want to know what the dimensions of the box should be in order to minimize the cost of constructing the box. Or maybe you're planning on fencing in a certain area and you want to figure out how you can maximize the area that's going to be fenced in. Or maybe you're looking at the curve of a function and you're trying to figure out what is the minimum distance between the curve and some other point on the coordinate plane. What these diverse contexts have in common is that you always look for the critical values of the relevant function in order to figure out how to maximize or minimize them. One of the reasons why a lot of people think optimization is hard to understand is because no two optimization problems are alike. Because optimization problems cover such a wide array of contexts, you can't expect to think about one optimization problem the same way as another. Fortunately, what I have for you here is a five-step process that you could use to help you break down an optimization problem into manageable steps, no matter what the context happens to be. Let's go through the five-step process step-by-step step to help us solve this problem. Basically, what's going on here is we're trying to construct a closed box. The first question we have to be able to answer is, what exactly are we trying to optimize here? As I read through this and I look for the answer to that question, the word that sticks out to me is the word minimize. In this problem, we're trying to minimize the amount of material needed to construct the box. The material needed to construct a box is what constitutes its surface area. So what I'm thinking is, since we're trying to minimize the amount of material needed to construct the box, we need to minimize the surface area of this box. So we need to build a function that represents our surface area. For problems like these, I find it very useful to draw a picture to help me make sense of where the function to be optimized comes from. Imagine this as a picture of a flat piece of cardboard that we're later going to fold up into a box. As with any box, we have a length, as well as a width, as well as a height. The sides labeled with the H represent the height because if you think about it, we're starting off with a flat piece of cardboard, but when we fold up the sides, these are the sides that are going to become vertical and therefore the ones that represent the height. Now we want to build a function that represents the surface area of this box. So let's find the areas piece by piece. The area of the base, aka the bottom of the box, is going to be length times width as will the top of the box. The left side of the box is going to have an area of width times height, and so will the right side of the box. The front side of the box is going to have an area of length times height, whereas the area of the back of the box is also going to be length times height. Adding up all these areas together gives me this as my surface area equation, which I could simplify by combining the like terms. Now, this looks like a scary looking equation because we have three unknown variables. Thankfully, we have step number two, which is going to help us with rewriting this equation so that instead of having three unknowns, we only have one unknown. What step number two says is to use the constraints given in the problem to help you rewrite your to be optimized function in terms of only one variable. A constraint is a fancy way of saying a fixed value. So the question we need to be able to answer is, as we read through this problem, what has to be true no matter what the dimensions of the box end up being? Well, reading through this, I see that one thing that has to be true is that the length is four times the width. It also has to be true that the volume of our box has to be 51 point two inches cubed. At this point, I'm going to translate English into math by writing equations for both of my constraints. Equation one is that the length is equal to four times the width, and constraint two is that V, the volume, is equal to the length times the width times the height, 
which has to be equal to 51.2. We now have everything we need in order to simplify our surface area equation so that it has only one unknown variable rather than three. If I substitute the first constraint into my surface area equation, I get this, which simplifies to this, which further simplifies to this. And notice in this expression, the variable w has more of a presence than the variable h. So what I'm thinking is, let's get an expression for h in terms of w so that our surface area equation could be in terms of only the width, w. What we could do is substitute constraint number one into constraint number two so that we get this. I can now divide both sides by 4w squared to now have an expression for the height h in terms of w. If I substitute this now into this expression, what I end up with is exactly what I wanted. An equation for our surface area that's in terms of only one variable, the width. Step three of the five-step process is to find the critical values of your to-be-optimized function. Since in this problem we're trying to minimize the surface area of a box, we need to find a critical value that is also a local minimum. To find the critical values of a function, as you probably already know, the first thing you need to do is take its derivative and set it equal to zero. From this point onward, it's just algebra to solve for your variable. I bring the fraction over to the other side. I multiply both sides by w squared. I divide both sides by 16 to get the w cubed by itself. I cube root both sides to get w by itself. So what this tells me is the width being 2 is a critical value. The next step is to determine which critical value out of the values you found are going to help you solve the problem. In this case, we have only one critical value, 2. However, in a lot of other optimization problems, you might have two or more critical values, some of them being maximums, some of them being minimums. However many you end up having, what you need to do is use the first derivative test to help you figure out which critical value is going to help you answer the question. Even though we have only one critical value in this problem, we still need to check to see if it's a maximum or a minimum because we're looking to minimize the surface area of the box. So if the two is a minimum, then we'll be able to figure out the other dimensions that'll help us minimize the surface area. But if it's a maximum, then this problem can't be solved. Notice that I put a boundary on zero because we can't have a width of zero nor a negative width. So when applying the first derivative test, I'm gonna choose a number between zero and two to see what's happening before we reach the critical value. An easy number to work with is one, so let's see what happens if I substitute one into my derivative. What I end up with is 16 minus 128, which is negative 112. Because this is a negative value, what this tells me is, in this region, the derivative is negative, and therefore, the surface area is decreasing from zero to two. Now let's test a point somewhere beyond two to see what's happening after the critical value. I'm thinking the number four is gonna be easy to work with. If I substitute four into the derivative, this gives me 64 minus eight, which equals positive 56. And because I got a positive number, this tells me in this region, the derivative is positive, which means the original equation is increasing. Since we are going from decreasing to increasing, the width being two is a minimum value. The final step of the process is to solve for any missing values that there may be. We still need to find what the length and the height need to be in order to minimize the surface area of the box. Thankfully, we have our constraints to help us out with this. From constraint number one, we know that the length is four times the width. If the width is two, then the length is eight. Using constraint number two, we could solve for the height. After substituting in two for w into this expression, I get that the height is 3.2. So the dimensions of the box that are gonna minimize its surface area while also making sure that its volume is 5.2 inches cubed are 
the length being 8, the width being 2, and the height being 3.2. If you have any sense of doubt about this, what we could do is double check our answer by multiplying our values and to see if we get the volume that we need, and in fact we do. Thank you for watching this video.